Hello everyone, this is Frugal Panda here with a review and visit to the Fort Garland Museum. This is the Fort Garland Museum and Cultural Center located in Costilla County, Colorado, which is, and the city is exactly where it's located, is Fort Garland, Colorado. Um, this was designed, this actual fort was designed to hold, uh, to house two companies of soldiers. This was to protect people in the San Luis Valley, which back then when this was actually created, was the territory of New Mexico, not exactly Colorado. Yeah. So, like, I went past here multiple times over the years, going other places, and never stopped. Well, my son, he's interested in history. I have a love for history. And finally, like, all right, let's go check this out. You know, um, same thing as uh, if you come to this area, there's lots of places to go check out from the great sand dunes, um, state parks. Alamosa's got a pretty decent downtown itself. So coming through here and going past Fort Garland, we had to stop this time. Yeah, we had waited too many years of not coming and visiting Fort Garland Museum because, to be honest, I didn't think it was much. Why did I not look it up all these years? And it was well worth the stop. The staff that work here are wonderful. They they have tons of information for you. This is a very well kept uh, actual uh, place. To be honest with you, it's very well kept. It's very nice. It's large. It's very interactive. We got to take our dog in. Can you believe that? We got to take our dog in. Of course, you take a dog. You know, people. You know your dogs. Dog's gonna raise its leg or something like that, and you know, you're not gonna clean up after it. Please leave your dog in the car so you don't ruin it for other people because you always got somebody who does that. Anyway, we had our dog <laughs> here, and they were like, Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. And I was like, Cool, everything was clean, bathrooms were clean. Much of the stuff here is actually interactive, which was really great to see. Interactive, I've been to some forts in the past where you stare through you like stare through the window at everything in there but you can't actually go in the building 90 plus percent of the fort garland museum and cultural center was interactive you could check out things they had videos playing you could walk into the guard house you could walk into um the quartermasters just for example in a variety of different places they had all types of information up for you to check out we went on this day it was kind of a wind uh, a windy semi-sunny day but kind of blistery wind it was us and another family and when we left there was another family uh, showing up to go there Put some money into, if you can, in this area. Stop by Fort Garland. This was really cool. Um, people that watch my videos, you know I'm an Army veteran. So I like I like this stuff. And it's just been years since I've went to, like, say, Fort Garland. I've been to the Bent Fort and other places, but never went to this one. And I'm an old cavalry soldier. So this, is, this was a cavalry fort. This is where... Um, the buffalo soldiers in this area were actually housed and they were known in this area and well respected and they also had the lowest desertion rates in the entire u.s army um yeah and considering i couldn't imagine how hot it was to be stationed in fort garland in the winter in the summer times because it get blistering hot in the summer times and then how freezing cold it would be out in fort garland alamosa area in the winter wow and they had low desertion rates it's pretty amazing they had all kinds of stuff for you to see young or older an example was that when we first got there there was another couple going through an uh an older couple and they're walking around and they were checking it out so uh, a generation or two ahead of us and then as we were leaving there was a younger generation with little kids coming in so that was really cool to see I, like I said, I've neglected this fort for too long, and they really put some money into it. And I think a lot of these reservations, these renovations, excuse me, are fairly newer um, that they've done. But this looks really well. They do a really great job. Um, this was built back around 1858. After the Treaty of Guadalupe, if you know what that is, that's when we took most of, uh, well, probably almost half, if not half, of Mexico's territory that would become New Mexico, Colorado, and a variety of other states. So, yeah, after that, so this was to protect it. it um, the size of Fort Garland apparently is 62 acres, and you cannot miss it. It's off the main highway, so you won't have a problem finding it. Um, yeah. Um, stop in stop in Alamosa get you a bite to eat and on your way out just go ahead and hit Fort Garland uh, make sure you go in there their little uh, gift shop is really cool too 
uh, like I said, it was a this was a win win for us. We got to see a place. Um, I put the hours that it's open, um, and usually people I guess spend about an hour, hour and a half here. So you, this does this won't take up your whole day. They also have I think reenactments and stuff there. So they have little special events too, which is really cool. Um, the staff gave me a lot of good information and told me about other places to go check out related to the Buffalo soldiers and like cavalry units from the old west which was really cool and really thankful um to them for that um hours operation is usually monday 9 a.m to 5 p.m and uh looks like all week wow they operate the same hours all week long. So according to their website, it's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Sunday. So they're open seven days a week, everyone. Wow. Um, that's really surprising. It's really worth it. And the ambiance got the mountains surrounding you. Um, it's really cool to come here. And one of the things I think during the remodeling of Fort Garland Museum is also they included a lot more women and children and just people that help the day-to-day -day operation of the fort. That a lot of times if you went to museums or these type of forts in the past, they were a lot of times lacking on that, like, you know, important people that didn't it, sometimes were invisible, like women. Women made a, were a huge deal, you know in these um in these um forts and everything these places wouldn't function without women and a lot of this um the roles that many different people played to keep the day-to-day -day operations going so it um i actually am watching a movie about an african-american soldier it's a fictional one but they actually had a picture of this woman um who was a buffalo soldier that came into the military army impersonating a man and they had no idea but she was a woman and this movie i watched on netflix it's a new one actually after i went to fort garland and i saw the movie it reminded me of that and there was actually a real woman that um was a cavalry soldier during this time that's a big deal unheard of and she may have been one of the only women ever to serve in the military and in the past as a man um and sneak in when women weren't allowed of course at that time so anyway, this day, it wasn't a bad day. It was kind of chilly, um, but the sun was out most of the time, a little bit on the windy side. But it, honestly, it was a great day to be going and checking out a fort, going in and out, checking out, you know, different, the different living quarters. Um, you got to learn about the 9th Cavalry, which were the Buffalo soldiers that were in this area, and even the uh, post office. Yeah, how they did the, how they moved mail around this huge territory they had and how they like at one time even implemented, they had like a bike unit that rode bikes out and like to deliver stuff and things. That's pretty wild actually considering the terrain and they didn't exactly have paved roads and all that back then. But look at how clean this place is for one, how well kept it is, all the different stuff it has, all the information it provides talking about different people from um, not just the soldiers perspective but women uh, Native Americans even had a thing that showed a list of uh, women that were missing that sometimes get forgetting about forgotten about that are like Native Amer uh, American backgrounds that are missing like now and all this so they put some money into this to making this place really nice um bathrooms there are bathrooms there they have rv parking street parking i had no issues with parking now festival days when they have some type of big um you know um something going on that's really important that a lot of people want to see it might be a problem but today it wasn't apparently I had free wi-fi i didn't bother my phone worked fine here um pet friendly it actually says on their website this pet friendly that's what happens you don't <laughs> Go on people's website and see what they have to offer. I would have been here years ago if I'd actually went on the website. ADA accessible. I could see people using wheelchairs and everything here. I don't see any issues. You might need someone to come with you to open doors and things here and there, but I don't really see a lot of it. There's a lot of open space here, so I wouldn't be too worried. They gave a discount. I got a discount for military, and they also give a discount for senior citizens. I do not believe I took the discount from military. How much it cost? I didn't really want to take a discount on it because it really wasn't that much. And that was the important thing about it. Anyway, shout out 
to Fort Garland Museum. Go check this out. This is a great place to visit and learn about United States American history. Have a good day, everyone. Frugal Panda out. Bye.